Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about some frost and freezing conditions, and then a parade of storms set up for next week with some severe weather to the south, and then snow to the north with some very windy conditions. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your Thursday, November 4th update. And I thought this was a cool map to share this morning from Zoom Earth. Is this satellite picture of the big picture of how this is all playing out. First of all, let me zoom in last week. This was that 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 nor'easter. So here's here's the nor'easter path that went off the east coast here, and it made kind of a loop-de-loop, -loop, made all that impact into uh, New England, and then it headed out to sea. And then when it headed out to sea, it actually developed subtropical storm characteristics, and that is what is now Wanda, and that actually went into a, a tropical entity. Now it's still actually tropical storm Wanda, but that's actually safely moving off the sea. There's another development down here by Panama that has crossed over into the Pacific, and that's also going to be probably named a storm as well as we're dealing with multiple storms coming off the west coast here with a yet another uh, cyclone that's going to be impacting uh, the Pacific Northwest as we're dealing with those frost and freezing conditions as that much cooler conditions start to filter in. And you can almost see where the cloud cover is. That's where all the rain is uh, still falling. And to the north of that, it's clear. And where it's clear, that's where we're seeing some of those frost and freeze warnings uh, take place. So let me show you the hazard map, how this is all setting up for today. There's those gale warnings off the coast. That's gonna be some very hazardous seas off the coast. And then those very high winds as that yet another storm pushes inland over portions of uh, Oregon here with those high wind watches. We've got numerous uh, frost and freeze warnings for portions of all the way down to the midsection of the country. And this continues to push further south. We even have some frost advisories for portions of East Texas uh, coming up for uh, tonight as we're, we're expecting near freezing conditions. So definitely cover the plants in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area in East Texas. But yeah, you can see the freezing line continue to push further south as sky is clear and as we swing on the backside we're still dealing with those rainy conditions out ahead of it but those guys are clear and that's allowing for those frost and freeze advisories then yet we have another potential nor'easter that's going to be setting up for over the weekend into part parts of monday and you can almost see the overall track of that particular system with these gale warnings already in place uh offshore with some very uh hazardous seas so let's take a look at the teleconnections and what we got to look at going forward because this actually gives you a true depiction on what's really happening and where some of the colder air that I think is really going to start to funnel in the uh, United States as we trend towards the second half of no November and especially that Thanksgiving week. So let's take a look at the, uh, uh, the Arctic Oscillation here, which is your AO. And this is, I know the timeline, this is November 4th. I know it's a little bit harder to see, but all the way to November 19th. So this is over a two week time frame. All right, so this is your AO, which is predominantly positive. So that keeps predominantly the more sustainable colder air well to the north. But once we get into that 13th time frame, now that November 13th time frame, you can see the trend where it predominantly goes negative. And the trend with these little whiskers here continues negative all the way through to uh, November 19th. So we're seeing a noticeable trend in the AO. But not just the AO, which is also the NAO, which is your North American oscillation. We are also seeing that noticeable trend. It kind of remains overall positive. But once we get into that, say, November 13th time frame, it definitely starts going negative as well. So now we're seeing two oscillations saying, hey, so we got more colder air filtering back in and pouring in into uh, the, the U.S., so as we take a look at the PNA, which is your Pacific North Oscillation, um, Pacific North American, that is your predominantly on the on the western part of the U.S. and it's trending. It goes definitely does go negative as we get some of those bombs coming in from off the west coast starting early next week. But overall, after that, it trends more or less positive 
for as we trend towards the second week of November and then getting into that third week of November here as the trend continues to remain positive with that. So bringing more or less bringing some of the warmer conditions predominantly out in our western areas. And then we have your West Pacific Oscillation. That is an overall trend to negative, which is actually going to help the EPO remain negative as well going forward. And there is your EPO, which is your Eastern Pacific Oscillation. That mainly pertains to the central and eastern two-thirds of the U.S. And that same thing, it kind of highlights it's been positive. It's going to remain positive all the way till we get about to the 13th of the month. Once we get to that 13th more of the month, we have a little bit more sustainable cold filtering back into the pattern. And then that puts some of the colder air continue to drain and see some of these whiskers drop all the way negative and all the way, all the way down to negative six to negative seven deviation. But you can see the overall trend with the, uh, the control and the overall mean on this green line continues to drop further and further southward and go negative as we trend towards that mid month and especially that third week of November. And then the GFS extended model just even implies and amplifies it even further is this particular model actually extends it all the way through the first week of November. So if you actually watched my November forecast, we highlighted pulses of that polar vortex entering the picture as we trended towards that third week around Thanksgiving, especially as we headed in towards December. And this is the GFS extended view on your Arctic Oscillation and the, uh, the NAO, which is your two congruent driving forces of your teleconnections dropping that colder air funneling back into the United States. As we trend towards that second week, and especially Thanksgiving week, this is about the 21st time frame. you can see on the control, it drops really negative down to a negative three to four deviation that is some very cold air funneling into the united states on your thanksgiving week and that continues all the way through that november 29th time frame so i think right now uh you could have a little bit more warmer conditions but the trend going forward as we get deeper into november it is definitely seeing once we transfer past that second week of November and the second half, and especially that Thanksgiving week, we could see a lot more colder air filtering into the United States and, and more sustainable, longer lasting uh, cold air as well. So, but today, this is November 4th, all right? So we'll take it kind of day by day and show you what's happening now. So, cause we have that storm system coming off the, uh, the Pacific Northwest again with more rain and then wet snow and in, 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 in the interior regions, that lake effect snow has been in full effect. I mean, some of these areas in Michigan and, and uh, parts of uh, upstate New York here, they've been having some pretty high totals coming off these lake effects and upwards to a foot of snow at times coming off these winds. These these uh, the Great Lakes are the, the water temperatures are about in the low 50s right now, so that's ample amount of warmth uh, to, as these winds traverse across with the cold enough air to transfer a lot of that into a lake effect snow, and that's what we're seeing in that part of the country. And it's even cold enough to snow it. I know last night we had confirmation about 45,000 feet up here in uh, North uh, North Carolina here that it was actually snowing. So it's definitely you can see signs of colder air filtering into the pattern on the back side of this system where we do have those frost and freeze advisories, but out ahead of it, we're still dealing with some of those rain showers all the way down into the deep south of Texas and then into Florida with that cold front continue to press uh, further southward. And there, as we get into your Friday, November 5th timeframe, that cold front continues to press south. As it presses south, the, the rain presses south, it continues to push further south, and then the frost and freeze line continues to press southward as we go through your Friday, getting into the weekend. As we, again, we have rounds and rounds of precipitation for uh, the Pacific Northwest. And then there's your Saturday, that cold front continues to press uh, further southward. Now we're kind of clearing out in places like in Atlanta, where you're gonna, you're probably all, all gonna be impacted from those frost advisories. We're forecasting 36 uh, for Sunday morning in Atlanta, but that's the main city and surrounding areas. You could easily drop to near freezing 
as those clear skies, light winds, radi radiational cooling takes place, they're definitely going to have to be covering the plants and a good chunk of the southeast as we wake up on Sunday morning. But there is a the low pressure system that we're going to be dealing with as we go into Sunday and into a Monday time frame for portions of the East Coast here as we have another developing nor'easter that's going to continue to uh, tr uh, train uh, possibly up the East Coast because here's the uh, time frame by Sunday, November the 7th. There's that low pressure off the coast. It's cl close enough. Where we're going to see coastal flood advisories right now already in place uh, for portions of uh, North Carolina here as that low pressure. And then the deciding point, once we get into Monday, there's definitely indications where it could definitely take a track and, and move it more offshore where it's not going to be impacting the Northeast. But there's also indications that it could continue to remain on this track as well and clip portions of the Northeast, say Rhode Island, Massachusetts, the Cape, those areas. So the uncertainty definitely lies once we get into that Monday timeframe, if this developing low nor'easter is going to be continued to, to push and remain safely offshore, or if it remains on this track and is able to clip some of these far, you know, coastal communities out here uh, into Boston, say, areas with those higher winds and some of those rain showers as this would continue pushing across. So as we get into that Monday time frame, there's the rebound. So we got colder conditions through the end of the weekend, and then the warm up. Once that cold air uh, moves in, then you have the warm up on the backside. We rapidly warm, clear skies. All this area is not going to be seeing a drop of rain, so it's pretty clear for a good chunk of the country. And that's going to allow the south winds to kick in and much warmer conditions, 10, 15, upwards to 20 degrees above average anomalies at time. But then there's the cooler air that I showed you that little bit of a dip in the P uh, the PNA that brings a little bit cooler air for a little bit of a time in the Pacific Northwest at the beginning stages of uh, next week by that time, that November the 8th time frame. So let's take a look at next week. So that's when things start to really ramp up with our parade of storms uh, to the north. And there's going to be a piece of energy that drops down south that brings us some severe weather. So here's the setup for Monday as we yet we have another developing big storm off the Pacific Northwest. That's going to bring a lot more rain into that area and then very high winds again. And as these will continue to move across, as we go uh, throughout the week. So as we get into that Thursday time frame, that one piece of energy continues to verse across from west to east well to the north as as uh, that that other piece of energy drops down to the south and that's going to set up some more rain coming back in the picture for places like Dallas, places like Oklahoma City as we get into that Wednesday night, Thursday morning time frame. And where we have a lot of the spin in the atmosphere, that's where we could have some uh, rotating thunderstorms with some severe weather and even possibly tornadoes. So as we get into that Thursday time frame, this is November the 11th, right? We've got that jet stream well to the north, sending parade of storms and snow filtering in in Montana, where it's going to be cold enough as those teleconnections slowly drop south. We're not even at the 13th yet, right? There's to the south end of the vorticity where we have rain showers into Texas, into Oklahoma, where we do have some rotation. We are going to be seeing some severe storms because look at the isobars really starting to type it. That's an indication of some very high winds breaking out of the backside. And yes, some of these storms could be rotating by then. And this is your little bit more favorite areas uh, still getting into uh, your second season for severe weather where it's going to be warm enough. I showed you we're going to be ample warm uh, out ahead of these storms. And so as that clash enters the picture again, this is a week away from now. Yeah, we could be looking at some more severe storms setting up for portions of, say, portions of Kansas, portions of Oklahoma, I would say more or less East Texas, and then Arkansas, and then getting in back into Louisiana, and then eventually going into, the, say, the Dixie Alley area by the time we get into that Friday, November the 12th time frame. So these areas, say, in Mississippi and Alabama could be looking at some severe weather 
uh, by then and then going to the north again there's that Friday look where we got that severe weather down to the south you can see the isobars here really keeping that gradient tight and then snow to the north so this trailing band will continue from Montana to the Dakotas to uh, uh, Minnesota as these teleconnections continue to press a little bit further south, that snow line's able to press a little bit further south, mixing in some of that colder air as that's th these parade of storms continue to move across uh, from west to east. And then as we get into next Saturday, November the 13th timeframe, that's when you can see the blue line starting to take shape. That's when some of the EPO starts to turn negative as well, like I showed you. And that brings the snow line a little bit further south, right? So some of these areas are going to be able to transfer over to snow by then as this developing system will continue uh, pushing off the west coast. And then by next Sunday, we could see another whopper of a storm setting up for the, uh, New England and the northeast with some very heavy rain as colder air filters in from the north and transferring some of this areas into snow by then as those teleconnections continue to drop further and further negative as we get into that second half of November. But there's your wind swath for the next week. And it's going to be a very windy week. Not so windy right now, but it really st cr starts cranking up by Monday and especially much of next week with these parade of storms moving across from west to east, basically from northern California to Colorado to Kansas to Missouri. This northern trail here where those parade of storms will be impacting the area that second system will drop south, setting up some severe weather over portions of Oklahoma. So where we do have some severe weather at times, yes, you're going to be gusty winds when those, those storms are going to be over your area. But then there's that potential nor'easter. Does it does it make a turn and continue to come up the come up the coast, or does it remain continue to push offshore? But that second system is going to come in on the backside for next weekend and really bring some very windy conditions for much of the Northeast uh, by then. So I'm do I am expecting a very windy week next week with a lot of high wind watches and warnings take place for much of the country. And then there's your rain setting up over the next seven to 10 days. You can see the track here. Again, much of the Pacific Northwest here, much of the Southwest continues to remain dry. And there's the, there's the Northern track. And then there's the Southern track with that vorticity. Most of this in Texas is gonna be rain, but then we could be transferring to some severe storms in, into Oklahoma into the Dixie Alley area. And then coming up the East Coast by next weekend, and as well with some more heavier rain and some of that's going to mix in with snow because there's some of your snow as that snow line continues to press further and further south this parade of storms will be more or less impacting our northern areas and then i think this will start to fill in once we get closer to that time frame of that 12 13 14 time frame for portions of the northeast with more of this being snow versus rain so hey i appreciate you guys watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm